It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. and iron shackles. The Divine Order's hospitality leaves much to be desired indeed.
A subpar cranium, that. Human, no wonder. Explains the smell. Shaking her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully. Her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shin. Fresh meat. <laughs> nice. Clump. Banded like a chicken's leg, too. That may be so, but look at the flies. Ban wisdom. Flies know when a creature will die. And it's around your head they're buzzing, not mine. With two shakes of her stumpy tail, the sheep turns away from you to peruse her hay-filled manger. Did you expect a needle? Get me out of this cage and I'll make it worth your while. You in? Your guess is as good as mine. Someone screamed loud as a banshee. After that, 
pure pandemonium. They never even told me what I was accused of. Just dragged me down here. Set me free, and I'll set you free. A fair trade, I should think. A gentleman among jesters, you are. Give that lever a pull, and I guarantee we'll both get something out of the deal. Before you can even touch the lever, you hear a sniff and snort behind you as the snoring magister mumbles himself awake. One bloodshot eye opens, and then another. <sighs> this is my shift over. Are you here to relieve me? Wait, you're no magister. You're a sorcerer. What are you doing here, filthy red scale? Choose your words carefully. My fists ache to meet a new face. And it's about time too. The lads and lasses up there are getting lazy. Figures they'd send one of you sorcerers down. They can barely be chuffed to wiggle a single toe. Can't just leave the prisoner alone, though. I heard he might be the one causing trouble upstairs. That's all I needed to hear. Just don't let that caged rascal fool you. You can't trust him as far as you can throw him. The prisoner's buoyant voice darkens as his eyes rest on yours. Ah, oh, freedom. Tastes better than wine. I'm nothing if not a man of my word. And I did give my word I'd set you free, lad. Say your prayers while you've breath to speak them. The halls await. to gain by killing me. I need to keep my guard up.
someone will be along to clean up, I'm sure. And I'm back where I started. I know where to go but up. Get your dirty little paws out of my head. This again? What a well of knowledge this tomb is. Dallas is such a dear lending it to me.
this again. Why you're looking a bit more chipper? Yes, looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. Did the murderer take him into this room? Or was he already here? Marks. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. Marks, no indications of a straw. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officers' quarters. Dear, I'm afraid you're a long way from home, my lord. A long way from the little bells that make footmen come a running. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. 
Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits, and if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Is he? Oh well. Some problems simply sort themselves, don't they? Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it. See? The collar's function. It neuters you of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Now where did I leave my calipers? A murder here. Behind the Magister, a blooded mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. If you have nothing to hide, I'm sure it'll go just fine. A young Magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Figured as much. Listen. I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that?
Not in here, it isn't. You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. But who? is blocked. I'll need to find another way. No marks. No indications of a struggle. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Got to keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? It was one of them. I know it. You put a knuckle on them. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like you presume right. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Psst. Kid, you been down by the room up the hall? No. You sure about that? No. What's your name? No. Gods, didn't your mother teach you any manners? She got eaten by a void woken. Forget it. Wow. Are you a dragon? You look like a dragon. I know it. But where are your wings? Put a knuckle in it. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle. Do you know Lo, sir? She's a really good singer. I'm better, though. Listen. La, 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 la. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable? Surely. What are you trying to hear, anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Sing us a song. I know you can. I forgot how. 
how to sing. I did. You're really red. I bet that's why the Magisters took you. It was one of them. They I took me because I'm magic. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. You, sorcerer, blood, no. Go. Name? Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable? Surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. <laughs> Got how to sing. I did. Well, you aren't here on my list, Scrammy. Eh? We're trying to catch a killer here. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. Picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You the mad? elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out, flicks a finger against one of your scales, and rubs his chin. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Seven years! What an infinitesimal period! Why would anyone... Oh! Oh dear! I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How... difficult. You have my apologies, Lizard. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. I do not believe I have been drawn anywhere. It is a quaint little read, but it has its faults. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Most unusual, and if it's not too rude to suggest, not much of an answer. No, I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. It was one of them. I know it. Would you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to cause The magisters are out for blood. You saw the body, didn't you? Big bruiser like you ought to be able to take him on. Right. I always knew you'd turn up, Throx and Ben Nest. Your kind always hung closest to our divide, like wolves around a campfire. Well, you got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with him. Sure about that. 
A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? A ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of the ship. Sick as a leper's cat. From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. There now, just like that. Squeak! Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. I always knew you'd turn out drops in the bend. It's the wheel, the wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we are heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Come on, please, Lone Star. That's enough. Captain, actually. And that figure tells me we're getting close to the Joy. Close to what lies beyond it, too. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with him. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. Sure you and you shut up. The cook bows slightly and wipes her hands on her gruel stained garb. Forgive me, Your Highness. I didn't expect. Uh, well, anyway, whether I had more than cornmeal and rotting roots to serve, I'd concoct something more fitting for one of your stature. She nods and smiles wanly before returning to her duties. I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sob story somewhere else. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this trampy fan. 
Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. Suit yourself. Was just going to adjust your collar for you. It pinches, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen Magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced Magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. The joy. I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Easy now. I might think the same, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You, Lizard, what's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name! Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. Just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up. You think me mad? An elf mad? sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. She shakes her head. Game for one, I'm afraid. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. You were uh, in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, your hunger gnawed and gnawed at you until you could stand it no longer. Finding the cellar door ajar, instead of trying to escape, you snuck into the pantry like a common thief only to find nothing but rather questionable turnips. There you stood, as a magister walked in, still hungry, feeling a mighty fool. Of course it is. The truth's right there, skin deep. 
But don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest hint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on, junk. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable? Surely. What are you trying to hear, anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Why won't you sing? That's enough now. Creep with those bubbles, try now. If she tries to run, she can tuck in. It. I'm trying to concentrate. You seem on air, Jobs. They don't what care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll no, give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. I strongly on. suspect you know all about it. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Well, perhaps you're not. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? Don't be mad. 